Welcome to lecture 1.4, Equations of Lines and Modeling. And to, again, give you a little insight into me, this is another picture um, from the wall called the Via Francigena, which is from London to Rome. I did from France to Rome. And this was a lovely lady that rescued me in a downpour in a small village in Switzerland. I couldn't, I didn't have a map. Again, I had no technology. It was raining and cold when I got into this small village and I had no map to find the church, which was supposed to be providing housing for pilgrims and hikers. And um, this lady was walking down the street with a bag of groceries and I asked her for some help and directions. And, um, she agreed to take me to the church. It was a Catholic church, but she warned me that um, the town was so small that the preacher only came um, once a month, and she didn't think it would be open. And so we got there, and indeed it wasn't open. There were no beds, and um, I planned on just sleeping in the church on a pew, and she just wouldn't allow that. And so she called around, and she found someone who would rent me a bed for the night. Um you know, and it just is amazing to me that, you know, we hear all this darkness in the world, but here I am, a stinky guy, uh, hiking through this small village, approaching this uh, elderly lady and asking for help, and she just put me right in her car and took me to the church and then took me to the other house and, and was just one of the angels along the way. So, let's be. In this chapter, we're going to look at equations of lines and linear equations are some of the simplest equations to solve because there are no exponents. And so we often try to use these linear equations to model behavior, growth or decay or shrinking, um, because it's easier to kind of use a linear model to predict. Um, obviously not everything falls into a linear model, but a lot of things can and give us at least some kind of indication of where things are headed to in the future. Um, so we're going to determine equations of lines. Um, we're going to give in uh, two different equations or equations of two lines. We can determine whether their graphs are parallel or perpendicular. And then we're going to model um, what happens in the real world. So from our last section, we know that uh, the slope-intercept linear equation is y equals mx plus b or f of x equals mx plus b. Again, m is the slope and b is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. And so um, if we know the slope and the y-intercept of a line, we can then find the equation of the line using this formula. So we're going to go backwards. Last time we had an equation and we figured out the slope and the intercept. Now we're going to go the other So we have a line that has a slope of negative 7 ninths and the y-intercept of 0, 16. Um, find the equation of a line. Well, remember, um, we know that the slope is negative 7 ninths, so we substitute that in for m. We know the y value of the intercept is 16, so we substitute that in for b and uh, into our point-slope formula, and now we're done. This is the equation of the line. Um, if we wanted the functional equation, we would just substitute in f of x um, for y. So we're just going the other direction from what we did before. I went through that pretty quickly, so you can rewind if you need to stop there. Because they can get a little more complicated. For example, let's say a line has a slope of negative 2 thirds and contains the point negative 3 6. So now we have a slope and a point. We don't have the y-intercept, and so that's really what we're going to try to figure out. Um, we can use the slope for m in our equation, um, but notice we still have to figure out the, the b. Um, and we now have three variables in there. We have an x, a y, and a b. Well, since we were given a point, we have an x value, which is negative 3, which we can plug in here. We have a y value, which is 6, which we can plug in for y, and then calculate the value of b. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, instead of just, it's not as easy as the last one, but it's not so difficult. So now let's plug in um, negative 3 for x and 6 for y. And let's solve this. 
for b. So we get 6 equals 2 plus b. I'm not going to do the algebra here. You can look at that, and if you have questions, contact me. And so we get the value of b is 4. So now we go back to our original point-slope equation and just substitute this 4 in for b, and we have our equation of the line. Okay? So if we have the slope and the y-intercept, that's the easiest form to get an equation of the line. That was the first example. But if we also have a slope and a point, we can use this same formula, plugging in the slope, the x and the y, and calculating b, and then using the slope and the calculated b to do the equation of the line. The slope to figure out what the slope is, and also to figure out the equation of the line. So if we want to find the equation of the line and we're given two points, the first thing we want to do is to, is to find the slope. Well, that's pretty simple, right? Uh, the difference in y's over the difference in x's, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or um, rise over run, okay? And again, I'm not going to do this calculation. You can look at the two points. Uh, we've done enough of these, hopefully, that you can see that. And so we get a slope of 7. Okay, now we could do what we did in the last example and just use the slope of 7 and one point. It didn't matter which one. We could use either point and put it into our slope-intercept formula, calculate B, and then substitute it back in. But we can also just use the point-slope equation, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, and substitute one point either one, it doesn't matter, into this equation and the slope, and we'll already have the equation of the line. So we get y minus 3, so we're using this first point, there's our y, our x is going to be 2, equals 7, which is the slope, times x minus 2. Now we're going to go ahead and simplify this into, uh, to solve for y, so we get, by doing distribution, 7x minus 14, and then add 3 to both sides, and we get y equals 7x minus 11, which again is a good way to check because we can see that our slope is 7, and indeed our slope is 7 here. So we're in good shape. Okay? So if we're given two points, we first find the slope, and then we can use this point-slope equation, just plug it in and solve for y, and we can get the equation of the line again. Or we can find the slope and then go back to the uh, slope intercept, use one point, solve for b, and then plug that in, like we did in the last example. If I'm talking too fast, remember you can watch it again, you can pause, you can try these problems, etc. So, um, vertical lines are parallel, right? We know that. Um, and non-vertical lines, like the example you see on the right, are parallel if and only if they have the same slope and different y-intercepts. So you can see here these two equations, 2x and 2x, so they both have a slope of 2, but they have different y-intercepts. The top one in, in red crosses at 4. The bottom one in green crosses at negative 3. So non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slope and different y-intercepts. Okay? Two lines with slopes m1 and m2 are perpendicular if and only if the product of their slopes is negative 1. So the slope of here is negative 1 half, the slope here is 2. 2 times negative 1 half equals negative 1. Another thing you might notice, which might make it a little bit easier, is notice that the slopes are opposite reciprocals, 2 and negative 1 half. Perpendicular lines have slopes which are opposite reciprocals. Perpendicular lines have slopes which are opposite reciprocals. Of course, lines are also perpendicular if one is vertical, x equals a constant, and the other is horizontal, y equals a constant, and you can see that here. Determine whether each of the following pair of lines is parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So probably the easiest thing for us to do here is um, we have to figure out the slope is so to rewrite both of these equations in terms of y. So solve the equations for y. The first equation is pretty easy because all we have to do is subtract 2 from both sides. 
and we get y equals 5x minus 2, and we can see here that we have a slope of 5. On the other equation, we're first going to subtract x from both sides. We get negative x minus 15, and then we're going to multiply both sides by 1 fifth. And so I get negative 1 fifth x minus um, 1 fifth times 15 is negative 3. Okay? And so here I have a slope of negative 1 fifth. So I compare the slopes, a slope of 5, a slope of negative 1 fifth. They are not the same, so they are not parallel. If they're perpendicular, they are opposite signs, positive, negative, indeed, and reciprocals, 5 and 1 fifth, indeed. So these two lines are perpendicular, okay? Because the slope of 5 and negative 1 fifth is our um, negative reciprocals, okay? And so when you're given these equations and trying to figure out whether they're parallel, perpendicular or not, solve for y and find the slope. Solve the y and find the slope. You're always comparing slopes to determine parallel or perpendicular. So let's try it again. This is a good place for you to pause and try this on your own and see what you come up with. So just hit the pause, solve both of these equations for y and see how you do. Just a good practice, shouldn't take you more than a minute or two. not going to go through the algebra here. I'm going to let you do it. And so here I can see I have a slope of the first equation is negative 2. The slope of the second equation is also negative 2. Since the slopes are the same, the lines are parallel. Let's try it again. Again, pause and do it on your own. I'm not going to go through the algebra. I'm just going to walk through this pretty quickly. So if you want to try this problem, which is a good idea, Go ahead and pause and do it on your paper, and then um, hit play again. I have a slope of 2 in the first equation. I have a slope of negative 3 in the second equation. They are not the same, so they're not parallel. They are opposites, positive and negative, but they are not reciprocals. So these lines, um, the slopes aren't the same. Their product is not negative. One, they're not opposite reciprocals, so they are neither parallel nor perpendicular. So, another way to do this, another type of problem that you're going to see in this section, is when we want to find a line perpendicular or um, parallel to a given line. So, we have a given line 4y minus x equals 20. And also, we have a point on this other line, and it contains the point 2, negative 3. We want to find two different lines. We want to find one line that's parallel, and we want to find one line that's perpendicular, um, both of those going through this point 2, negative 3. Okay? So the first thing we need to do is to figure out the slope of this line, and then we know that the slope of the parallel line is the same, the slope of the perpendicular line will be the opposite reciprocal. So let's first again solve this equation for y. Uh, we add x to both sides, we divide or multiply both sides by 1 fourth, and we get this equation. So the slope of our original equation is 1 fourth. Okay, so the slope of our parallel line will also be 1 fourth. And then we have an x and a y. Remember, we just did this exercise. So with a slope and a point, we can find the parallel line, the equation of the parallel line. The slope of the perpendicular line will be the opposite, so it'll be negative, and it'll be the reciprocal. So it'll be negative 4. Again, we have negative 4 in the same x and y, and we'll figure out that. Now let's do the same thing doing that. I apologize. And we have the equation of the perpendicular line. Okay. Again, I've gone through those because we've done several examples. I went through the math part pretty quickly, but the joy of the video is you can go back, rewind, and listen again, or you can even slow me down so that I talk like this. Although I have a lot of students who tell me they do the exact opposite, especially when it's a long lecture. They speed it up and I sound like a gopher. All right, now why do we do all this stuff? 
And I know you say you have that question all the time, and I even see shirts like, hey, another day has gone by and I didn't use algebra. That's bullshit. Oh, excuse me. That's bull. We use math all the time, and we use algebra a lot when we're trying to figure out an unknown quantity. You will use this in business. You will use this in engineering, in science, in prediction, etc. And one way we do that is what's called mathematical modeling. When we can create an equation to model what's happening with data over time or over some kind of input that allows us to predict um, what will happen later at a later date or when we produce so many more widgets or whatever. Um, if the predictions are inaccurate or the results of experimentation do not conform to the model, then we have to either get rid of the model or change the model. Okay. And modeling typically is a very much of an ongoing process because things are changing constantly and very rarely do linear models last for um, a long period of time. In general, we try to find a function that fits as well as possible. Um, we look at observations or the data. We use some common sense and, and some thoughtful reasoning um, to how we can find a model. And we call this curve fitting. It is one aspect of mathematical model. Here we're going to do the simplest version, which is just using a linear model. We can get to, um, you know, as you go up in your math ability, and in fact, math majors are one of the um, most um, likely to get hired out of a four-year bachelor's degree because of things like modeling. And, and because of technology, data is so rich. There's so much data um, that companies um, need people who can um, figure out how to make that data uh, make sense for other people. Okay, so we're going to look at um, something specifically called a scatter plot and see if a linear model will work. So a scatter plot is just when you plot all the points of data and then you kind of see what kind of shape it's taking. Is it going up and down like a mountain range? Is it just kind of sliding up, etc. This um, scatter plot on the right here is pretty linear. You know, it's pretty, it's increasing consistently. It's not exactly a straight line, but a, a linear model would be a good uh, uh, model for this. A linear equation would be a good model for this. So this is the model of the gross domestic product of a country, and this is the market value of final goods and services produced. Okay, the market value depends on the quantity of goods and services and their price. Okay, and so what we have here is the gross domestic product. Um, over a number of years, and specifically from 1980 to 2008. And um, instead of putting those on there in 1980, we're going to use an index. This is called an index. So we're saying when x equals 0, that equals 1980. Five years later, x would be 5, but that represents the year 1985. This allows us to have a much simpler um, equation um, when we're just doing the number of years from 1980. And that's very, very common in modeling to have an index that 1980 equals zero. It's also very common for students to make a mistake and instead of plugging in zero for 1980, they plug in 1980 instead of using the index. Okay, so what are we going to do here? We want to model the data in the table below um, on the U.S. gross domestic product. That's here over here. We want to model this data um, using a linear function. Okay. So all this is asking me to do, or you to do, is to create a linear equation based upon this chart. And notice what we have here is an x value and a y value. And what have we been doing? We've been figuring out how to make a linear equation if we have two points. Okay? And then we're going to estimate the gross domestic product in 2012. Well, our model only goes up, our data, excuse me, only goes up to 2008. So we need the data from four years later. 2008 is 28, 2012 would be four years later or x equals 32. So be careful with that. Don't plug in 2012 when you get your equation. Remember that we're using an index. So we can really choose any two data points to make the linear equation. In this case, we're gonna use five, um, 4.2, which is the, the data in 1985, five, 4.2. And we're also gonna use data from later on uh, 25 and 12.6. This is the data from 2005. 
So notice we have an x and a y and an x and a y, and now all we're going to do is write that linear equation. Our model is the linear equation. Okay. So just like we did before, we're going to find the slope, y2 minus y1 from those points over x2 minus x1. And then we're going to use the slope and one of the points. We're going to use the 5, 4.2. Why do we use that? It's smaller numbers. They're easier to calculate. We won't have such a big um, calculation potentially. Okay. So we plug it into our point slope formula. Y minus Y1 from the last example equals M, the slope, times X minus X1. We do the math, we multiply by 0.42, we add 4.2, and we get our equation, okay? We do not forget that X is the number of years after 1980, and Y is in trillions of dollars. And so you can see here, here's the equation of our line superimposed on the scatter plot. And you can see it's a pretty good representation. Sometimes they're below, sometimes they're above, etc. But we're going in a general linear fashion. This is the model. This is the answer to the question. This is our linear model. Y equals 0.42x plus 2.1. Okay? So if I wanted to figure out the gross domestic product, remember in 2012, I'm going to use the linear equation that we figured and simply plug in 32. Okay? It's 15.54. If you leave that as the answer on the test, you will get it wrong. 15.54 what? 15.54 trillion dollars is our gross national product in 2012. This is the end of our lecture for uh, 1.4. I uh, hope you enjoyed that and saw some real life applications here and don't wear that t-shirt that says you don't use algebra. Have a great day. Oh, sorry, there's some